Hello Virgo! Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For the main part of the read, I'm using The Cosmic Slumber Tarot by Tilly Walden. Website on the bottom is liminal11.com if you're interested. Feel free to freeze frame on that if you need to, of course. Supportive Oracle Cards. Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. Website on this one is rockpoolpublishing.com.au. A is an apple, U is an umbrella. Feel free to check that out if you want to as well. Okay, what do we have for Virgo? Um, I almost said Virgalicious, but then I'm thinking Fergalicious. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't even know what sign she is. <laughs> um, I have no idea off the top of my head. I have really no idea. Um, Virgo. I think, I think we're going to leave that. Things look fairly simple at the moment. Um, I like this card in this deck. When I see this card in this deck, the masculine, to me, especially with the moon in the background, because the moon to me is a very feminine influence, uh, the way I've learned it, the way I relate to it, it's kind of like the masculine admitting, or not admitting, connecting to the, the, full, the full scope of their being, and kind of like, they're very masculine, but at the same time, they're completely connected with their feminine. Like, there's no competition. There's, there's like, a uh, complementary energy, not a competi com competitive. I feel like when, when things between masculine and feminine go bad, it becomes competitive one way or the other. It can go either way on that, where it's kind of like, well, we know they don't, that type of thing. But this feels to me more like, no, I feel like between the two of us, we, we build each other, we help each other. Um, I learn from the other and the other helps me. It's very, you know, inclusive, very, you know, I, for example, if this is a person who is more of a masculine feeling person, more masculine emoting person, uh, if that's the right word, they don't do it in a way that demeans the other side or a different side or a different gender, I should say. Um, it's just kind of like they're very comfortable in who they are, but they don't use it against another gender. Um, and I feel like this is on your side, kind of like you're very strong and stable and you very much feel who you are. It doesn't diminish anybody else, but you're like, I'm not going to apologize for who I am. I'm just not going to, you know, put it, put anybody down for who they are. They don't need to be who I am. They don't need to be like me. I'm very happy being who I am, but doesn't mean anybody has to assimilate to the way I do things. And you seem very autonomous to that, uh, with that. Um... Your energy is really good. Other people might be wanting you to assimilate more to how they are. Hmm. I feel like that might be happening. Because we got the Five of Pentacles going on here on the other side. People want you to, to assimilate. You're very comfortable who you are, but people want you to be more like them. Um, there's similarities with somebody else. And they want you to like emulate more of the way they do things. Which is weird because it's kind of like they celebrate certain things about you but they're like oh but you could do better with this and you could do better with that but that's not your way um i want to make this really simple so if we're going to make it about gardening just for argument's sake say you're really good with flowers especially when i see a masculine very good with flowers because like there's a lot of connotations with that you're just very comfortable with who you are it doesn't define who you are you just enjoy Maybe gardening flowers, that's just your thing. You're good at it, and you like it, and it makes you happy. It has nothing to do with, you know, the context of who you are as a person, your morals, or anything like that. You just like what you like, and you excel with that. But this person's like, oh, you know, Virgo, flowers, like, that's, like, really, why flowers? Do, like, what would be better if you did tomatoes and potatoes and vegetables, maybe some corn, and, like, do something that actually shows purpose, Virgo. Do this, do that. And it's kind of like, I do do things that show purpose. Maybe you're that person that grows flowers just for gardening, you know, just for argument's sake. And you sell it to venues and maybe, you know, a lot of different wedding venues use your flowers. This uses your flowers. Businesses buy your flowers all the time. Like, you do have a purpose. There's a beautiful thing that comes from this. Beauty has a purpose. I mean, not for nothing. It brings up energy. It makes people feel good. 
pleasant sense help people that brings people into a better mindset usually not always but usually um, I'm just gonna go with that but they're like yeah but that's not good enough you should be doing this you should be this you should be this it's kind of like they're, they're also gardening but they feel like the way they garden you should garden what they say you should garden you should stop doing that and do what they want they want you to assimilate the thing is why it's tricky is because it's very similar but it's not what you want to do um, the question is, can we keep getting along with this energy? There's something here where they're trying to get you to try to do it their way. They're like, oh, you don't have to do everything my way, but like, do a little spot here and just do a little spot with the way I do it and see how you feel about it. Start doing it my way. And the question is, do you really want to do that? It's not the fact that you can or can't do it. It's the question, do you want to do that? And it's kind of like, I feel like that's what this Virgo reading is mostly about. Sticking with what you literally want, it's not about what you can and can't do, because I feel like you could make it happen. Uh, whatever they want you to assimilate to, yeah, you could make that happen, but I feel like taking this step over in a direction that they want you to go, that you don't really match with, that could be a problem down the road. Because um, I feel like the farther you go down that road, the more they try to hold you to it. You know, now that you've done this one piece of land like don't give that up don't give that up that's great that's great and they're going to keep trying to push you to do more and push you to do more and they're going to try to get you to assimilate to what they want you to be versus who you want to be i feel like it's like inching losing ground inch by inch and like a decade passes and all of a sudden all you're doing is gardening vegetables and you're like what happened to the beautiful flowers i used to do why did i change that a decade goes past like it literally might take a full decade before it happens but inch by inch, you're going to lose ground on something you love and start doing something else that somebody else loves. And it's going to change how you feel about the whole situation. Instead of enjoying it and loving it as much as you do now, it'll feel like, well, it's purposeful, it's right, but you won't have that joy you used to have. And you'll start to wonder, like, where did that joy I used to have go? I feel like I'm still doing good, but I'm not as happy as I was. I don't understand what happened. It's kind of like looking back like, oh, wait, I see what happened. Somebody's trying to change you. Somebody is trying to change you is what I keep getting. Because these aren't bad cards, but I feel like they don't like the way you do things and they think you should do things differently. They're trying to change it and make it go their way and they're not going to back down. They're very conflicted with, with, with how something you do in life. It could be how you live. It could be what you do for a vocation. It, something about it they don't feel is like that's not the best way to do it, Virgo. You need to do it the way I'm telling you to do it. This is not right for you. This is literally not right for you. They're very conflicted about this. Like, they want you to live life the way they live life. They feel like they know better than you how to live your own life. This is not good. Um, they're feeling left out, too. I feel like what you need to do... I don't want to be too harsh with this. Is to see it for what it is. I, I'm not saying you have to, like, you know, boot this person out of your life. So I don't hope it doesn't come across that way. But judgment goes in your favor by leaving them on the outside. Disconnecting from them in this context. Disconnecting from them as much as you can get away with. And I understand, like, I, I, well, I should say, I respect that some of you work with this person or maybe more than one person. Um, you gotta somehow separate yourself in that context from them. So if it's a work thing, separate yourself from them work-wise. If, if you're in a company and you work directly with this person, I almost feel like I, I, I want to change jobs in the same company or I want to like, because I feel like this connection is ironically, ironically toxic. And the re reason I say ironically is because they literally get along with you. They see things, see things so similarly. It's like you're both gardening. You both like gardening, but do totally different things. This, this connection over time will become very toxic for you. It's like you feel good, you like this person, but like they keep pushing you in a direction you don't really want to go. At this point, it's kind of like it's time to like start distancing yourself in this category from them. You don't have to completely cut them out of your life, but when it comes to this category, you need to step away from them before they rewrite your life for you. And I, I hate to say it, but I feel like that influence is so constant. It just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back. It reminds me of like limestone where water just keeps running over it and running over it. Over time, you start seeing how much it's wearing it down. The first couple 
maybe years, you don't really see that much. You might start noticing it, but you don't see that much. You don't think about it. But over decades, over centuries, it really starts making a big difference. Um, it's kind of like it's time to step away from this in this category. doesn't mean you have to cut this person completely out of your life, but it's time to step away from this person in this category. You could still say stay friends with this person, on good terms with this person, but whatever this category is where... You feel this way, they feel that way. It's so similar, but they want you to change and do what they want. You got to separate yourself from them on that. Um, however, you need to, because um, I feel like you are very strong. You know what you're doing. You can change this whole situation before it becomes a situation. You can change this before it becomes an issue. When you start distancing yourself from them, I feel like it becomes kind of obvious in the beginning. And I feel like they start quieting down, but you got to make sure you completely disconnect in this category. So, for example, if this was gardening, like we were saying before, stop connecting with them on a gardening level if you don't have to. Stop talking with them on that subject. Don't let that become a, comp a, a topic of conversation. And just, if you have to at some point, make it clear, like, you respect that they do what they do well, but you don't want to be connected with it. And disconnect yourself from it. Otherwise, I feel like they're going to erode you over time and you're going to, it's going to change what you do. It's going to take away a lot of your joy, which you didn't come this far, far to not be happy, which is strange because I see it like if, if we go out 10 years, you look at what you're doing and you're like, it makes feasible sense and you don't want to walk away from it. And you're like, I should be happier. It feels like in the future, it's like, I should be happier than I am. Everything looks great on paper, but I don't feel completely happy and connected with what I'm doing. That's where I feel like that's where this is going to go. If you keep following them and keep letting them influence you, again, they keep weathering you down over time. I get to this other end of this, and it's like, it looks good on paper, but I'm really not happy. And I'm, it's kind of like looking back and realizing how much you've changed. And like, it feels like it's a lot to change it back. And it may even look, you may look at it at that point going, yeah, but if I try to change it back, I might lose um, some of the value to the situation and I don't want to damage the value so you might feel you might doesn't mean you are stuck but you might feel stuck at that point doesn't mean you are just it may feel that way um, the best way to get out of this again is to distance yourself they're gonna do what they need to do um, they feel what they're doing for them is perfect for them it really is they don't need to change what they're doing for them. They just need to kind of keep, they need to realize that you're not, like you're a little different. You're very similar, but a little different. And that difference is important and great and doesn't need to be changed. Um, I'm also getting like this analogy of also, um, sometimes people use vegetables in some flower arrangements. I've seen beets used for them before. So maybe you do use some things that are, are crossovers I don't know why I'm going there, or like sunflower seeds, stuff like that. Um, the crossovers are fine, but like you don't want to make that your mainstay. For however that fits in, because I'm like, why are we even adding that in? But there you go, whatever that means. There could be some crossovers. So for example, if you're a f you, you do gardening with flowers, they do vegetables. Maybe you do do beets, for example, which is a vegetable of some sort, right? Because a beet's a root, right? That's a vegetable. <coughs> Maybe you do do some, but you use them for flower arrangements. You don't use them for sustenance. You use them for visuals. Um, just because you do have a crossover doesn't mean you need to cross over more. Keep it in your in your court, in your way, in the way you want to do things. Make sure you stay strong in what you want. Um, if you're gardening, for example, you do flowers, but you are gardening be beets because you use them in your arrangements or you put them in certain things, and you don't you're not looking to add them to food for sustenance keep doing it the way you want to it doesn't mean you can't make it doesn't mean you can't grow beets you grow beets for whatever you need to grow them for you use them as you decide fit like if that's what you want to do that's what you do um i have seen beets and flower arrangements too which is the beet part is the root so i don't remember how that worked out but i remember seeing it sticking out so it was cool but i don't know why i'm adding that other than i'm just adding it there you go so the long story short is like somebody's starting to weather you down. Now is the time to disconnect from that. It may not seem like it's a big deal now, but slowly over time it will kind of like suck out the joy of what you're doing. It may make financial sense, 
but what you're doing currently also makes financial sense. If it changes over time, I keep getting, if it changes over time and you get to this other point, you won't be happy, but you'll also feel like you're stuck, kind of like, well, I don't want to mess up my financial stability, so I can't really go back. That's how you might feel. It doesn't mean that's how it truly is, but it may feel that way. So instead of even getting there, instead of even letting it get there, shut that down now, disconnect on this category from this person, because I feel like they're a good person in your life, normally, but on this category, disconnect from them, and then just you know, do it as you need to from there. That way you don't end up in a place where you're like, I wish I didn't do that. Now that I'm looking back years later, I'm like realizing how that got there and now I feel trapped. You don't want to feel trapped later. Anything else? All right, I'm going to shut this down here. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's James the number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below, same email. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.